Thanks again to the people and the companies who helped to make this test possible. If you haven't watched part one of this series, IR Testing, I recommend that you check it out, or at least read the summary I've posted on my blog. Here in part two, I'm taking a look at how these cameras perform in low light situations using a dimmed tungsten bulb. This setup was lit with a single 20 inch Chimera using a 200 watt bulb dimmed to around 60%. I used a recently calibrated Minolta color meter to take a reading of the light, which was at 1600 degrees Kelvin. The incident reading was at an F2 at EI800, and a spot reading of the gray card yielded an F1.4 and 7 tenths. Here are a couple of the frame grabs showing additional spot readings I took of each setup. All readings were taken using the Siconic 758 Cine. The lens I was using only opens up to a T3.1, which meant I was underexposing the shot. This was a deliberate choice as I could have easily lit the scene to full exposure, but that would have defeated the purpose of this test. The purpose was to push these cameras to their extremes and see how they perform. Using an underexposed tungsten lit scene with a CMOS sensor camera is a great way to push them to their limits. Some of the most compelling images that I've seen have come from cinematographers who have pushed the limits of what the film negative could handle. Digital cameras are just the latest emulsions we have to work with, and if we want to create compelling imagery, I think it's worth the effort to explore what happens in the outer boundaries of the cameras we use and then use that information with purpose and forethought in our storytelling. One thing is certain, all of these cameras can produce beautiful imagery if you play within their rules. A skilled cinematographer moves beyond the hype to get to know every tool they're using. If you're looking for a clear winner here, I suggest you head back to your camera forum of choice. You'll be disappointed with my test. As I proceed through each exposure, I'll be showing you the ungraded frame in its natural log format, then I'll show you a sample grade that I did of that frame. My intent with the grade was to make the scene feel warm, as if it was being lit by the fire, while at the same time keeping the skin tones looking decent. I have blown up a portion of the frame to 200% so you can see more clearly what the noise pattern looks like. If you want to play with the raw frames for yourself, they are available for download at my blog. On with the test. First up, the Alexa. Through my previous exposure profiling with the Siconic DTS software and the use of Photoshop, I have found the Alexa to have a maximum underexposure range of 8 and 5 6 of a stop, while a safe underexposure range is 5 and 5 6 of a stop. While there is detail below this range, it is packed so closely together that it essentially gets squashed in the grade. So I don't count that extra 3 stops as actually being usable. To me, the underexposed image of the Alexa at EI800 isn't objectionable. You can clearly see noise in the blue channel but the noise pattern is small, tight, and random. Even in the log files, I do not cringe, and I tend to be adverse to digital noise in my imagery. As these images are graded, a lot of the noise ends up getting crushed into the blacks. By grading it this way, I did lose significant detail in the shadows, particularly in the fireplace. As we move on to the EI1600 exposure, we see a definite increase in blue channel noise. Personally, I wouldn't use this image without further noise removal or cleanup by a professional colorist. To me it looks like it's possible to work with this image, but to do so requires more expertise and a better tool set than I have on hand. Through crushing the blacks, some of the noise does disappear, but it's still affecting the entire image. In the close-up, I think I put a little too much red into the skin tones and flattened out the mids a bit too much. As I worked with this image in post, I found very minor changes in the grade had a big impact on the final image. It would have been a lot more helpful to have been working with a control surface than with a keyboard and a mouse, as I couldn't get the precision I desired. At EI3200, the blue channel noise continues to jump out, and now we even see a large jump in the green channel noise. Even if the image could be saved in the grade, I'm not sure I'd want to use it, as the whole image seems to be crawling with noise. And now onto the black magic. According to my exposure profile, this camera has a total underexposure range of 7 and 1 sixth of a stop, with the real world or safe exposure range of 5 stops. The log files in this camera are very desaturated. You can clearly see the noise here, but it feels like there is less than the Alexa. But I think that's due to the decreased saturation levels. Like the Alexa, the noise pattern of the Blackmagic is small, tight, and random. Even though I do not like digital noise, at EI800, it doesn't seem to make the image unusable. As I grade these images, a lot of the noise disappears as the blacks are crushed. Working with a Blackmagic camera in post is very similar to working with the Alexa. I found that I was moving the grade in a similar direction with both cameras, which leads me to believe that they are very similar in color science. 
except that the Black Magic is a lot more desaturated and it doesn't have the same underexposure range as the Alexa. At EI1600, the noise gets blockier than it was at 800, but it still feels like it's less noise than the Alexa. In addition to the image being more desaturated than the Alexa, I have a hunch that the optics may be affecting my perception of noise level as well. Because this is a smaller sensor camera, I had to zoom out on the lens to get a similar field of view. And since I'm on a wider lens, the noisy parts of the image are magnified less than they were on the other two cameras. The noise in these cameras does get hidden in the grade, and I think I could possibly use these shots if I were to spend more time cleaning them up. Now on to the EI3200 image. This is where things really fall apart. The noise has become very gritty and blocky, making the image unusable for my taste, even with the tight, random pattern of the noise. It makes it feel like the whole image is crawling around, which is distracting to me. The grade hides a small amount of it, but not enough to save it. I think it's also worth noting that the internal menus only allow the camera to go up to EI1600, but since I was recording in RAW, it's all metadata anyway, so it wasn't a huge concern. When I open up the files in Resolve, there's an exposure slider in the RAW section that allowed me to increase the exposure by one stop, which is how I was able to get to an EI3200. According to my testing, the Epic can record up to 8 and 1 3rd stops of underexposure, but in reality, the usable or safe range is 5 and 1 6 stops. Just like the other cameras, the finite difference in levels on the waveform and in Photoshop are too small to actually be usable. As we take a look at the EI800 images from this test, the blue channel noise is clearly seen. To my eyes, the noise pattern feels bigger and less random than the Alexa or the Blackmagic. The image as a whole also feels significantly more murky. However, in the grade, a lot of the noise is crushed into the blacks, and the image feels nice and crisp. I'd use this image in a project if it fit the mood and style of the story. As I was grading this image, I found it difficult to match the skin tones of the Alexa or the Black Magic, so I just went with a grade I liked. At EI1600, the patches of blue noise increase, and the images become unusable for my taste. They might be salvageable by a professional colorist, but with the amount of noise in the image, I'm not sure I'd be happy with the results. The grade hides some of it, but not a lot. At EI3200, the noise pattern has become completely unacceptable to me and the image is falling apart, just like the black magic did. The graded images only hide a small amount of noise. It's also worth noting that in these shots, the lens is vignetting. I thought that I'd zoomed past the vignette, but due to the low light nature of the scene, I did not see that I needed to zoom in further. While it isn't a deal breaker in this shot, I would have liked to have a cleaner image to work with in the grade. Here are my observations and recommendations. Lighting at higher EIs is more about controlling spill and fill levels than it is about getting enough light for proper exposure. As the EI levels increased, the image became flatter as spill from the light became more pronounced. The reflection of the light in the tile also became more pronounced. As I increased the EI, I should have also flagged off the light from the tile to compensate. The more you push any of these cameras in their extremes, the greater care and expertise it takes to grade them properly, as very minor changes make a big difference in the grade. Having the proper tools like a control surface to make finer adjustments would have been helpful. Each of these cameras has a definite look to them. If I'm working on a project that will push the envelope with underexposure, then I'll need to choose the camera that will fit the look of the story. Personally, I'm inclined to shoot with the lens wide open at higher EIs. As you probably noticed in this test, as I compensated the exposure on the lens with the increase in EI, the image noticeably increased in contrast. This was a function of closing the iris of the lens. Keeping the lens wide open would have allowed me to retain a bit more detail in the image, and the blacks wouldn't have crushed so quickly in the grade. When working with the Alexa, my preference is to work with it at an EI of 800. Even when underexposed, the noise pattern is small and tight enough that it's not objectionable. Underexposure at EI 1600 will require some additional cleanup that's beyond my skill level at this point, and I would not use an underexposed image at EI 3200. When working with the Black Magic, I would feel comfortable working with an underexposed image at EI 800 and 1600. The 1600 image needs some additional cleanup, but even without it, it's not completely objectionable to me. At 3200, I think the image is unusable. It's also worth noting that I think the Black Magic doesn't have an OLPF. The imagery from this camera is unbelievably sharp. This is something that I've noticed on all the footage that I've seen from the camera to date and it's appearing on my footage too. It's just too sharp. I don't want to see the pores of anyone, and when I see that on test footage of a young actress, it's not a pleasant sight, nor will the talent I work with appreciate it. 
which is why I really appreciate Lori's willingness to be my test subject. As you can see here, there are some lines on her forehead that show up on the Black Magic that do not appear on the Alexa or on the Epic, which was downsampled from 5K. Both of these cameras, I know, have OLPFs in them. Personally, I think the Black Magic requires some sort of diffusion to help people look their best, as well as to prevent the audience from seeing the application of makeup. There are some tricks you can use in the grade to hide some of this but that does require additional work and expertise. When working with Yepic, I only feel comfortable underexposing the image at EI 800. At 1600 and 3200, the pattern of the blue channel noise is too pronounced for my taste. I would also recommend trying to stay away from low color temperature lights, as it only exacerbates the color science of Yepic when it's underexposed. I hope this test has been enlightening to you. I know it has been a very informative learning process for me. Stay tuned for part three, where I explore the other end of the spectrum, overexposure. Until next time, get out there and shoot.